One of the glories of the medieval French world is the Basilica of Saint-Denis, just north of Paris. The 12th century edifice that stands there today is a testament to the single-minded will of his most powerful abbot, Suja, in helping to develop the idea of a sacred monarchy. The basilica reflected explicitly how the church and monarchy would work together to ensure the order and peace of the realm. More than just an abbey church, Saint-Denis was a city of the dead. Unlike other important graveyards, the inhabitants of this particular morbid urban space were no less than the kings of France, whose remains since the early Capetian kings were housed at Saint-Denis. There is no question about the importance of the Abbey of Saint-Denis to the program of French royal authority. It is easy, I think, to lose sight that behind the lifeless marble tombs of long-forgotten monarchs, there are some very real personal stories. Sometimes stories of triumph, as seen in the billboard advertisements of Francois I's endless wars with his Habsburg rivals. But more often than not, there are very real stories of tragedy and heartbreak. The history of the French monarchy is full of such stories. But for me, one of the most moving is that of Louis X's son. Precisely because a very personal family drama was played out on the very public stage, as the destiny of the French throne hung in the balance. Um, it's interesting about Louis X is, in fact, what happens after his death. Louis X had two wives. His first wife had produced, had, wasn't able to produce any legitimate children. Um, of course, like most French kings, Louis X had produced a wide number, a large number of bastards who were unable to inherit the throne. Through his second wife, however, Louis X had got his wife pregnant, but had died before his wife had given birth. His wife, after Louis X's death, his wife gave birth to a son known as John. In French, if you look, take a look at French monarchical charts, John I is not noted. It often you see John II, John II the Good, but not John I. The reason for that is that John I, who was born after his father's death, of course, officially became king. However, as a sickly child, John, John I lived only for 20 days, having ruled for pretty much only a week. Now, child death is not uncommon in medieval Europe. Children die all the time. But what makes the story of John I all the more tragic is the rumor that goes out that, that's connected to his death. Um, it is assumed, and certainly from palace gossips and palace uh, intrigue, it is suggested that his uncle, Philip, who became Philip V, who was a regent, has sort of helped hasten uh, his young nephew's death by putting a pillow over his face in order to become king of France. Um, hence, the point, of course, is that many French kings, of course, came to the throne through very uh, scandalous ways, as we saw with Pepin the, Pepin the Short, uh, who usurped, quite literally usurped the throne from the from the legitimate uh, to parody. Philip V most likely or possibly murdered his nephew in order to take the throne. You may be horrified by that, and to, certainly to a modern audience, it is a horrifying idea. But I think we need to keep in mind that during, during this period, kings needed to be warlike. And the, the, the prospect of having a sickly child on the throne was probably more threatening because France most likely would have fallen into a violent civil war as various noble, fa various noble families would have vied for the crown. Philip V as the next in line, as brother of, him, of Louis X, probably saved France from a series of civil wars if he was in fact guilty of murdering his nephew. As distasteful as that may be, sometimes rough justice is justice nonetheless. saint Denis suffered particularly badly during the French Revolution, and all the royal tombs acted as a lightning rod for the fury of the revolutionaries. In the end, all the tombs were destroyed and desecrated. So what we see today is a shadow of the former glory of the royal necropolis. However, today one cannot help sense the heavy weight of what once was the royal city of the dead, sanctified by the population of a secular priesthood, better known as the monarchy of France. <laughs>